I just arrived, uh, I guess, about two hours ago. So, uh, and we're about to to take off for the uh, Hard River tomorrow. But uh, so I can't speak as uh, anyone who knows anything other than what I've read uh, about the Peel. And I wanted to. I was happy to, to meet with the press, but to try to provide a context for one, why am I here, and why I feel protecting the Peel is really important. I'm really delighted my son is with me, my daughter, and one of my daughters and my wife are all going to have the experience now of two weeks. And of course, for me, one of the exciting things is no internet, no email, no telephone a real wilderness uh, experience, which is very hard to do. In the United States, several years ago, uh, I read that the furthest in the south of the 49th parallel, the furthest you can get away from a road is 18 miles. So uh, the idea of wilderness, really large intact areas without roads is a pretty rare thing uh, in North America today. My my excitement about experiencing the Peel is that increasingly around the world, large, intact wilderness is disappearing. They're becoming very, very rare, and because of that, they're becoming all the more precious. And I'll explain why in a minute. I took my family to camp in the Serengeti, one of the really great places on the planet, but if any of you ever, have ever been there, the whole plains is just crisscrossed with lines of tracks from four-wheelers with tourists all through the area and the impact on that area. It is not a pristine uh, ecosystem any longer. I uh, took my family in 1989 into the heart of the Amazon rainforest, 14 days by dugout canoe from the nearest settlement to a village called Aokri, the Kayapo people. And we lived for two weeks and again, that was the way people have lived for tens of thousands of years. Today, the, they have television. The, all the mahogany trees in the area have been cut down because they brought in uh, these um, ATVs and uh, the area is being gradually degraded, even in the heart of the Amazon rainforest. I worked with the Lubicon Cree in Alberta, who up until the 1950s were traditional hunter-gatherers basically living off the land. And then they began to put in seismic lines for seismic testing. They began to put in lines for elect transport of electricity. Then logging roads came in. And when you look at maps of Lubicon areas now, they've been cut into countless tiny pieces. And each time the development that came in was, oh, just a little bit. Oh, we just have a small footprint of this pad here or, or this little road here. But the ultimate result is that the intactness is gone, and we know that that's no longer wilderness. It's not doing uh, what wilderness does. 